130 Journal of Meteorology Volumes, Controlled Altitude Free Balloons, by Athelstan F. Spielhaus, C.S. Schneider, and C.B. Moore College of Engineering, New York University. Manuscript received 4 December 1947. 1. Purpose drift bottles have been used for many years in the study of ocean currents and have provided interesting data. In meteorology, no corresponding device has been available. It is evident, however, that a balloon which is free to move with the air currents, and yet whose altitude can be controlled, has many important applications in meteorology, as well as in other fields, where it may be desired to keep instruments at altitude for considerable lengths of time. An example is in the investigation of cosmic rays. Here, clusters of ordinary extensible meteorological balloons have been used, but the constancy of altitude obtained is not sufficient for many meteorological applications. The purpose of the present investigation was to develop a balloon with a control system which would fly at a predetermined constant level for periods of many hours. Such a balloon has wider application than the ocean drift bottle, because, whereas the latter is limited to surface or near-surface currents, controlled free balloons may be set to drift at any pressure elevation desired, or along other thermodynamically defined surfaces, as long as the element defining the surface changes in a monotone fashion in the vertical. In addition to the uses for maintaining instruments at high elevations, there are numerous potential applications of these balloons. Direct measurements of air trajectories and of lateral diffusion become possible. The balloons may also be used as vehicles to convey and drop radiations over ocean areas. One problem in this application is to obtain an absolute altitude high in point, as it will be difficult to identify the point at which the radiosonde reaches the sea surface. 2. Earlier attempts There have been numerous attempts for various purposes to get a balloon or group of balloons to stay at a fairly constant altitude. Meissinger was interested, sponsored by, and in cooperation with the Watson Laboratories of the Air Material Command. Abstract The results of an experimental program to develop balloons with associated control devices, which will float at constant pressure in the atmosphere, are given. Newly developed plastic balloons and automatic ballast equipment are described. Examples of successful controlled altitude flights are shown, together with a preliminary analysis of their trajectories. The constant level balloon may provide data not obtainable from an ordinary pilot balloon network. Future possibilities and plans for its use are indicated. In the meteorological aspects of this, using a manned balloon. In the investigation of cosmic rays, as for example, by Clark and Korf, 1941, clusters of ordinary meteorological balloons, 350 gram or 700 dash gram size, numbering anywhere from 20 to nearly 70, were utilized. No altitude control devices were used. The balloons were merely given different amounts of inflation. Thus the whole train ascended to an altitude where certain of the more highly inflated balloons burst until the remainder just balanced the load. Thereafter, the assembly descended slowly due to loss of lift by the diffusion of gas. The only provision for having the system regain altitude if it descended too low was by arranging the launching before dawn, so that after the bursting of the first balloon and the subsequent descent, superheating of the balloons by the rising sun would cause the whole assembly to rise again, thereby increasing the duration of the flight. The system does not have sufficient control for many purposes. The much-publicized use of balloons by the Japanese in the last war represents an attempt which must be considered highly successful from the point of view of the length of time which the balloons stayed in the air. Here the objective was not to obtain any critical altitude control, but rather to ensure that the balloons remained floating. The Japanese non-extensible balloons were of two types. One type was of heavy paper, coated to minimize diffusion, of spherical shape about 25 to 30 feet in diameter, and containing about 19,000 cubic feet of gas. A solid ballast control system was utilized and gas was valved at a low internal pressure, about 2 inches of water, to prevent the balloons from rupturing due to the increase of the internal pressure by altitude fluctuations or radiation changes. Such a valve tends to conserve the lifting gas but acts as a safety device to prevent damage of the envelope due to too great an internal pressure. The solid ballast system was complex. Approximately 900 pounds of sand was used on each balloon, distributed in 36 bags. 
The dropping of ballast was controlled by a bra switch arrangement which dropped a bag by igniting a fuse when the altitude fell below any one of four different levels between 25,000 and 5,000 feet in addition. A delay mechanism consisting of a two minute fuse was arranged between successive switches so that after ballast was dropped, two minutes would be allowed for the balloon to regain its altitude. If it did not regain in this time another bag of ballast would be dropped. The system was inefficient because if any one of the 36 fuse arrangements failed, no more ballast was dropped. The second type of Japanese balloon was similar, in general, but slightly larger. It was made of oiled silk and therefore would stand a greater internal pressure approximately 6 inches of water. The higher the internal pressure that the balloon can stand, the less gas need be valved under conditions of superheating or altitude fluctuations. The Japanese released many balloons of these types from their islands and estimated 5 to 7 percent of those released reached the west coast of this country. The balloons floated between the surface and 30,000 feet above sea level. Those which reached the west coast must have remained aloft from 4 to 10 days. While the altitude maintained was not constant, these balloons were highly successful for the time they remained in the air. An attempt in this country was made in 1943 by the Dewey and Army Company, to obtain constant level balloons which would float at altitudes up to 15,000 foot an ordinary 350 gram meteorological balloon was used but its volume was controlled by a non-extensible shroud around it. With this method a flight at about 5,000 feet was obtained at fairly constant altitude for about an hour and a half. 3. Design of controlled altitude balloons As a result of the Japanese and other experiments, the use of a non-extensible envelope for the balloons was indicated. If a perfectly non-extensible balloon could be built with no diffusion through the walls, and which could withstand a high internal pressure, it would automatically stay at a constant density where the buoyancy of the full balloon equaled the load. In practice, control devices are needed to offset the leakage and diffusion of gas, to compensate for vertical currents in the atmosphere to correct for the motion of the balloon due to diurnal changes of the balloon's temperature, and to compensate for the vaving of gas which is necessary to prevent rupture of the envelope. It was decided to use a plastic as the balloon fabric, as some modern plastics are quite transparent to radiation, strong, easily fabricated, and relatively inexpensive as compared with coated fabrics. A choice of plastics. In the selection of a plastic material of which to make the balloons, the desirable properties are a low brittle temperature, b low permeability, c high tensile strength, d high tear resistance, e chemical stability, f high radiation transmission or reflection. Polyethylene soon recommended itself for use, with its brittle temperature of below, 80 f. It is apparently unaffected by ultraviolet and ozone. The permeability through 1 mil of thickness and 1 square meter of area for 24 hours is 10 liters for hydrogen and 7 liters for helium, at normal atmospheric temperature and pressure. Figure 1. Polyethylene balloon, 20, polyethylene foot diameter. Is also relatively easy to fabricate. It has an ultimate tensile strength of 1,900 pounds per square inch at 25 C, which, in a 15 feet balloon made out of 4 mil fabric represents a working pressure of about 2.3 inches of water. The tensile strength at the temperatures at which the balloon flies at high altitude may be more than three times the value quoted above. Figure 1 shows a polyethylene balloon 2 Florida owned successfully in Flight 26 described below. Another film investigated is Saran, which has 10 times the tensile strength of polyethylene, three times the strength across the seams. Saran has a higher transparency and 1 30th the permeability of polyethylene. The effective brittle temperature of Saran for this work is not known reliably. B Ballast Valve The altitude control is an automatic ballast dropping device consisting essentially of a diaphragm operated needle valve which jettisons liquid ballast whenever the balloon is below the altitude at which the control is actuated. This is shown in Figure 2. The ballast reservoir, Figure 3, in general, can hold 15 kilograms of the liquid ballast, usually compass fluid, a highly refined kerosene-type petroleum product. When the atmospheric pressure outside the diaphragm is 5 millibars above the internal pressure, 160 grams of ballast per minute flow under a 1-foot head. When the automatic ballast valve is wide open, which is after 6.5 millibars increase over the internal pressure, 
300 grams per minute flow. These values may be compared with a diffusion loss of lift of the order of magnitude of 10 grams per hour from the thicker 15 feet balloon described below. Quite positive altitude control can be obtained. Efforts are made to cause the static rate of leakage, that is, the leakage which proceeds when the automatic ballast valve is closed, to exceed slightly the rate of loss of lift due to the diffusion of the lifting gas from the balloon. To facilitate setting the fixed leak, a manually operated ballast valve, consisting of a leak adjustable by means of a fine needle valve, is added to the ballast release assembly. See Minimum Pressure Switch Obviously, the automatic ballast valve must not be in operation while the balloon is rising, as this would be a waste of ballast. Therefore the automatically operated needle valve is closed until the balloon reaches altitude. This is accomplished by having the loaded diaphragm of the altitude control open to the atmosphere until the balloon descends from a minimum pressure. At this time, an electrical contact is made and a squib cuts a force since this manuscript was written, the procedure has been simplified. Only a simple fixed leak is used for daytime flights. The automatic ballast valve is used alone for flights through sunset or sunrise. 5. A small electrically detonated charge. Restraining cord and allows a needle valve to seal off the diaphragm from any further access to the air. Figure 2. The capsule then contains a volume of air which has been trapped at the existing pressure and temperature, at the time of operation of the sealing switch. Thereafter the aneroid will withdraw the ballast control needle valve when the ambient pressure increases to the point where the entrapped air is compressed below this volume. Figure 4 shows the minimum pressure switch which makes the electrical contact at the time of seal off. It consists of a trapped volume of air that is allowed to escape through a mercury pool as long as the outside pressure is decreasing. As soon as the exterior pressure increases once more, however, mercury is drawn into the tube making the seal-off contact between two electrodes. 4. Height determination up to the present time, the standard radius on has been used in order to determine the altitude at which the balloon is flying. This permits a regular radius on descent to be obtained during the period that the balloon is rising. Thereafter, as the balloon remains at approximately the same altitude, it becomes somewhat difficult to identify the radius on contact but utilizing both the temperature and pressure indication, this is possible. A special radius on modulator of the 011N type has been designed. Figure 5. The pressure pigging, line, minimum. Pressure switch, automatic, ballast valve, I, vent. Ballast, reservoir, filter, battery box, manual, ballast valve, discharge tube, capsule and linkage is of conventional design, but in place of the commutator bar. A motor-driven helix is employed. This system permits the determination of figure 4. Minimum pressure switch mercurial. Pressure data without knowledge of the history of contact sequence or of the ascent or descent of the balloon, as is required in the conventional radius sonde. 5. Tracking of the balloon The balloons that have been flown by the riders usually have been tracked by theodolites. Airplanes have also been used to extend the observations. These two methods require the balloon to be visible and not obscured by cloud cover. When available, ground radar has been used in tracking the balloons, with good results. A series of SCR-658 radio direction finders is also used, arranged in a net along the expected trajectory of the balloon. In addition, aircraft equipped with inverted search radar have been employed to extend the tracking net. 6. Flight results While the characteristics of various plastics were being investigated, four preliminary flights were made with clusters of ordinary meteorological balloons, from 16 to 26 in number, to which two to four towing balloons were attached. The towing balloons were cut free by brass which at a predetermined altitude. The remainder of the balloons were inflated so that they exactly balanced the load hung from the cluster. To offset diffusion, Sand was dropped from an arrangement of tubes, 9 to 16 in number, each containing about 200 to 1500 grams of sand ballast. This ballast was dropped by a switch mechanism on descent only. Some of these flights were relatively successful as a beginning method but the dropping of discrete quantities of sand caused too great fluctuation of altitude and therefore was abandoned later. The first successful flight stayed at 51,000 feet plus or minus 100 foot, for 38 minutes.
Another remained between 30,000 and 40,000 feet for 147 minutes. The latter shows the same characteristic time altitude curve as the cosmic ray clusters, although its altitude control is superior. It is not believed that much improved altitude control can be obtained, utilizing ordinary meteorological balloons. Flight termination was usually due to deterioration of the balloon caused by the sun. In the first flight utilizing plastic balloons, a cluster of 10 7-foot diameter balloons 6 was used. The load on the cluster was 16.5 kilograms. An altitude control was used. Unfortunately, the maximum altitude reached was not as high as the predetermined altitude which was selected to seal the diaphragm of the automatic ballast valve. As a result, the cluster rose to ceiling and stayed at this altitude for a short while. Diffusion and leakage of helium produced a loss of lift at the rate of 125 feet per minute. The next flight was made with a single polyethylene balloon, 15 feet in diameter. To ensure sealing off, the ballast release diaphragm was set to operate at an altitude of 12,000 feet, considerably below the calculated ceiling of the balloon. After a dawn release the balloon continued to ascend to 15,100 feet where it leveled off, then slowly descended to 9,000 feet due to diffusion losses. At this altitude the ballast release began to operate and thereafter the balloon maintained its altitude within plus minus sign 1300 feet for a period of 41 hours before the radio signal was lost. However, in the first two hours of this period, before the convection current from the desert set in, the balloon maintained an altitude of 9,200 feet an explanation as to why the ballast release functioned at 9,000 feet, although it was set to operate at 12,000 feet is plain from the following data. The air in the diaphragm was sealed off on the dawn ascent at 12,000 feet, where the pressure was 657 millibars and the temperature 9 C. However, by the time the balloon passed through this level during the slow descent, the instrument temperature was 19 C. This means that the pressure of the air trapped inside the diaphragm was higher than it was at time of seal off. For the ballast valve to function, the balloon had to descend to a pressure which would be greater by about 3 millibars than the pressure of the trapped air at its now higher temperature. Of course, there was little ventilation past the instrument, and therefore the instrument temperature was about 25 Celsius above the millibars in temperature after the sun had risen. The automatic ballast valve operates when the volume inside the sealed diaphragm becomes slightly less than the volume at seal off. Denoting the altitude at which it can operate by the subscript H. The pressure divided by the temperature at this altitude will equal the pressure at the sea loft altitude divided by the trapped air temperature at the time of sea loft. In this case PS equals 657 MBT minus 9 Celsius equals 282 A, TH 39 Celsius, 312 A, where the subscript S refers to sea loft. Thus the pressure at altitude H is given by pH equals PATH divided by T0 equals 727 millibars. This pressure, at which ballast release will begin, corresponds to an altitude of 9,000 feet, which is the observed altitude maintained by the balloon for nearly 4-12L, HOURS. The theodolite lost the balloon in clouds early and the airplane observer never succeeded in seeing it, so the balloon may have remained for a considerably longer period at this altitude. 11 hours after beginning the ascent, the balloon was reported to have been seen over Albuquerque. New Mexico, and about 26 hours later a report was made from Pueblo, Colorado, which seemed to indicate that the balloon was still in the air at that time. The meteorological situation and wind data for that area at the time of flight support the contention that the latter observations were of the same balloon. The next flight consisted of an assimilabarsley of various balloons, as follows, one 15 feet diameter 0.008 inch polyethylene balloon. 67 FT diameter General Mills 0.001 inch polythene balloons, 2 350 grams meteorological balloons for stadium measurements. The single balloon had a measured diffusion loss of lift of 4 grams per hour. The General Mills balloons were observed to lose lift at the rate of about 100 grams per hour per balloon. Three of the 7 feet balloons were inverted and deflated shortly after launching, due to differences in the rates of rise of the various balloons in the cluster. Therefore, the altitude reached was not high enough to affect sea loft. It is for this reason that the minimum pressure switch was developed for use in later flights. 
Figure 9 shows the elevation and plan views of the track of this flight. The train leveled off at 16,500 feet. The diffusion loss of lift of the remaining balloons was approximately 300 grams per hour. The ballast valve used had an unusually high rate of static leakage which had been measured before release and found to be 310 grams per hour. Thus fortuitously, the loss of lift was compensated by ballast leakage. This nearly constant leakage held the balloon at 16,800, 700 feet for 7 hours. The duration of the flight was 91 hours. When the original 2,700 gram ballast was expended, the balloon descended rapidly. Even had the automatic ballast valve been functioning, the constancy of altitude would have been the same. This seems to indicate that only a minimum of automatic control is needed, provided that diffusion losses are slightly overcompensated by a constant ballast leak. Other flights also indicate the importance of a check valve in the balloon appendix to prevent dilution of the lifting gas with air. If this is not done, the altitude reached is far under the theoretical altitude determined by the displacement and gross load. 7. Control systems Two systems of control are possible with the equipment as described. The balloon is controlled between an upper level ceiling, where the full balloon buoyancy just equals the load, and a lower level floor, below which the automatic ballast valve operates. Schematic curves for these two systems of control are shown in Figure 6. In the first system of control the rate of static ballast leakage is greater than the diffusion loss of lift, and the balloon will stay at the ceiling. If it is displaced above the ceiling the buoyancy is insufficient to balance the load and it will descend again. Provided the rate of ballast discharge is greater than the rate of lift by loss of gas this ceiling will slowly rise by vaving of gas, and as gas is lost by diffusion. The less the amount of gas the lower the pressure higher ceiling must be for the gas to fully distend the envelope. Unnecessary vaving is undesirable and may, in part, be minimized by use of a restraining safety valve set in the appendix which will allow some slight pressure to be carried in the balloon, preventing gas loss at the peaks of minor oscillations, but still vaving gas before the balloon ruptures due to too great an internal pressure. In this system of control, the automatic valve is not sealed off until the balloon starts a descent due to cooling or other changes in lift, as when night falls. Upon descent the valve is activated and starts dropping ballast immediately. This continues until the balloon is no longer losing lift at a rate greater than the diffusion losses. The balloon will then rise above its former ceiling to a height determined by the weight of ballast dropped, and remain there as long as there is ballast to compensate for lift losses. Flight 17, reproduced in Figure 7, used a low leakage balloon and is an actual case of ceiling control. It may be compared with the idealized time altitude curves in Figure 6. In the second system of control the static rate of leakage is less than the diffusion loss of lift. In this case the balloon will descend to the floor, where the automatic control operates and the balloon floats at an equilibrium altitude where the rate of ballast release exactly balances the rate of loss of lift. Floor control conserves ballast, since only that needed for altitude control is released. However, the altitude of the floor varies diurnally as the temperature of the entrapped air in the automatic ballast valve is affected by solar radiation. Two methods are being investigated to circumvent this undesirable feature. 1 is to fin. 8. Wind vectors at 16,000 feet for El Paso EO, Albuquerque Abe, and Roswell THJ, at 03H, 09H and 15H Mountain Standard Time on the 7th of July 1947, in connection with Balloon Flight 11, mean motion of which is shown by the balloon vector. Cross-hatched sector contains all wind vectors at these three stations for the three observation hours and for the three levels, 14,000, 16,000, and 18,000 feet. Temperature compensate the diaphragm, the other to insulate and shield the valve from radiation. Using the ceiling control system, flights of less than 24 hours not passing through sunset, may be held at ceiling by use of a non-extensible balloon and a simple fixed rate of leak to overcompensate diffusion losses. The constancy of level will be better the lower the diffusion and the lower, therefore, the rate of rise of the ceiling. The automatic control is needed for flights lasting through a period in which day changes to night. 8. 
Preliminary Trajectory Analysis of Two Constant Level Balloon Flights, the 7th of July 1947. 7. The most striking feature of the constant level balloon flight. Flight 11. Figure 9. Originating at Alamogordo Army Air Base at 05H08M Mountain Standard Time 8 on the 7th of July 1947 is the disagreement between the actual trajectory and the trajectory that might have been estimated from routine upper wind report. In this connection the observations from the Weather Bureau stations at El Paso, Roswell, and Albuquerque have been examined, since the path of the balloon was contained within the triangle formed by these stations. Over El Paso, the wind direction at 16,000 feet. The approximate average altitude of the balloon during the greater part of the flight was approximately SW at 03H, ESE at 09H, and ESE at 15H. Over Roswell, the apparent average wind direction at 16,000 feet was S during this period. Over Albuquerque, which was considerably farther from the path of the balloon than the other two stations, the wind direction at 16,000 feet was variable between WSW and SSE during the interval from 03 to 15H. In contrast with these observations is the fact that the constant level balloon floated in an essentially steady WSW current between 06 and 09H. In Figure 8 the wind observations at 16,000 feet have been plotted for El Paso, Roswell, and Albuquerque for 03H, 09H, and 15H. The wind directions at 14,000 feet, 16,000 foot, and 18,000 feet only the intermediate level is shown in the figure are all contained in the 150 degree sector between directions 90 single quote and 240 single quote. Yet the mean motion of the balloon approximately 265 single quote between 055 48 meters and 13 1 1 1 1 meter fall LSE and Turi LYOUTSIDETHISSECTOR. An indication that this local WSW current was of small depth is given by a special upper wind observation made at White Sands at about 13 H. The observation in question recorded a wind direction of 250 single quote at 16,000 feet, which is in excellent agreement with the first part of the trajectory of the constant level balloon. The interesting fact about the White Sands observation is that at all but one of the other reported altitudes between the ground and 20,000 feet, the wind directions were from either the Nebraska or SE quadrants. The trajectory of the balloon curved slightly anticyclonically over the eastern slopes of the Sacramento Mountains. This characteristic is suggestive of the well-known deforming effect of a mountain range on an air current directed toward the axis of the range. In this case, however, the validity of invoking the aforementioned effect to explain the anticyclonic curvature, when the wind at levels below the mountain summits appears to have been blowing approximately parallel to the range, depends on assuming that the air currents parallel to the range themselves constitute a barrier deforming a higher current blowing in a different direction across the mountains. The sharp cyclonic bend that occurred after the balloon had come over relatively flat country occurred at the time that the balloon began its final descent and is due to the fact that the course of the balloon turned toward the north as a result of descent to levels where the wind had maintained a southerly direction throughout the day. It is of interest to compare this flight with Flight 17, Figure 10. It may be observed on Figure 10 that no deforming effect of the mountain barrier is apparent. This, however, is to be expected as the altitude of the balloon above the mountain top is three times that of Flight 11, where this anticyclonic deformation of the trajectory was observed. The balloon was ultimately recovered from Croft, Kansas, a distance of 530 miles from the release point. On the basis of the observed wind speeds a 12-hour flight duration is estimated. Within the coming year it is hoped that a number of meteorological investigations may be attempted, utilizing constant level balloons. Release of three or more from a single point to float at the same level, release at a number of points to obtain a synoptic presentation of the trajectories in a chosen level, and the dropping of radiations from balloons are some of the operations to be attempted. Efforts will be made to simplify the arrangement so that a constant level flight may be made in a routine fashion and at no greater cost than the ordinary radiation flight. Reference, Clark, E.T., and S.A. Korf, 1941, The Radiation. The Stratosphere Laboratory. J. Franklin Inst. 232, 217-355.